Okay, today I'll talk about multi-party computation mainly and uh, on some automorphic encryption later. Okay, so what we do is uh, MPC protocol, secure against an active adversary, corrupting a dishonest majority, and of course the security is uh, computational, and we choose to uh, have this uh, UC framework. And as you see, there are some other examples of this kind of work. Early construction by Canadian friends, the MPC in the head approach, and uh, well, the August team has this preprocessing model also. And uh, okay, this funny reference, well, you'll see it in 40 minutes. And, uh, but today we'll mainly focus on, the, on this one and on our work. Okay, so, Notation. So since our work is, uh, compares very well with this uh, Bedoza paper, I will say Bedoza when I mean Bendling, Damgo, Orlandi, Zacharias, Eurocrypt 2011. And I'll say speeds for today, today's topic. And uh, you can figure out what it means. Okay. So we both, uh, uh, reach this MPC protocol in the preprocessing model, meaning that the MPC takes place into two phases. A uh, preprocessing phase where uh, players engage in uh, a protocol where they will get some shared randomness at the end. And later on, they will engage in an online phase where they will compute the actual function to be computed. Fun facts the preprocessing is independent of the function, so you can do it months in advance without knowing what you're going to compute later, basically. And uh, another fun fact is that the online phase is extremely fast because you don't need public key encryption. That's very nice. So, of course, two phases. Let's talk about the online phase first and then on the preprocessing. So, in order to understand our online phase, I'll have to make a digression on Bedoza's online phase first. So computation in the Bedoza paper is taken in, uh, yeah, it's still dealt in uh, a secret share, uh, secret sharing of values, of secret values. And by secret sharing, I mean additive secret sharing, and the IS share is given to PI. Security, on the other hand, is given by max on shares. So for every secret, you have N shares. For every share, you have and max, and uh, player i will not only hold the value xi, but also the jth mac on the value, on the share xi for every other player pj. On the other hand, pj will hold the key for that mac. So throughout this talk, I'll denote by bracket x this situation, meaning share i is given to pi, and the max and the keys are given accordingly. Good. Uh, so we want to compute any algebraic function. So if you have an algebraic function, you can decompose it in sums and multiplications. So let's see how to compute sums first. So that's easy. Since uh, the secret sharing is additive and the max are linear, you can do everything locally, meaning that to compute the sum of bracket x plus bracket y, Players will just add their shares locally, their max locally, and the keys locally. What about multiplication? That's uh, slightly more advanced. So we use the beaver trick. If you are given some multiplicative triples, meaning a bracket representation of a random value A, B, and their product, then you can mask X and Y via A and B, using the addition protocol, and then you can reconstruct these masked values and compute a value Z as the value A times B minus B epsilon times minus del uh, A delta times plus the constant epsilon times delta. And uh, you do the math, Z is equal to X times Y. So in the Bedosa paper, notice this. There is a Mac checking every time there is a reconstruction. And this is something different than 
what we do. OK, so computation in their case, well, let's see the philosophy of the protocol. So linear secret sharing schemes and max will allow you to compute additions. Multiplicative triples will also allow you to compute products. For the security part, the secret sharing will give you privacy and the max will give you authenticity. And the complexity of this online phase is the following. For every secret, you have n shares. And for every share, you have n max and keys. So you need a square amount of field elements for every secret. Can we do it better? Well, yes, we can do it. So notice that in the Bedoza, they use max on the shares in order to authenticate the secrets. So what we were thinking was, well, we could do something else maybe. And uh, yeah, we sat down for a while and we decided to, max, to use the max on the secrets in order to authenticate the secrets. So we define, and, uh, we define another representation for values. So we assume we have a bracket notation for alpha, one single values for all secrets. And we define this angle notation for the secrets, meaning additive secret sharing of the value and additive secret sharing of a MAC on that value. And uh, the data needed per secret is then linear because you need n shares plus n shares of the MAC, which is good. But does it really work? Well, not in a straightforward way because notice that in the Bedoza, the keys for the MACs were privately held. Well, now we have one big master key for all secrets. So as soon as we reconstruct, we can have problems, meaning that at every multiplication in the Bedoza they reconstructed, they needed the key for the MACs, while, yeah, if you reveal alpha, in our case, you can forge every Mac, which is not really that secure, so you can't take this uh, online phase as they have. So, well, the solution, the solution we came, out, came up with was the following. We compute everything insecurely until the opening phase. We let players commit to their max, open the master key, and then check the max. And since the opening is after the commitment of the max, adversaries cannot really cheat. Uh, so this is the solution, and let's see how it performs. So as I said, you have an improvement on the pre-processed data needed. And we also have an improvement on the complexity of the protocol, meaning this is really what matters instead of this. And uh, practically, we also have a very nice improvement, basically two orders of magnitude. And we also have a theorem stating that our uh, online phase is uh, essentially optimal in your favorite measure. OK, let's move to the pre-processing. So uh, yeah, so what is the target of the pre-processing? It is to generate these multiplicative triples. So the high level idea is we want to generate random value A and B, secret share them, encrypt the shares, and from those encryptions, compute an encryption of the product of the random values. And after that, we want to distribute shares of the product. So there are some, uh, oh. there are some problems. So the first problem, this one, is that an adversary could perhaps not distribute uh, ciphertext where he knows the plain texts. And the second problem is, well, how can you compute an encryption of this product given shares of the summons? And uh, so in the Bedoza, they were using zero knowledge proofs for both problems, while we were thinking that maybe for the second problem, so computing C, we can have a better trick. And uh, we were thinking, well, why don't we basically embed this property in the encryption scheme? So, um, so the problem is the following. We have fresh encryption of shares, and we want to compute an encryption of the sum of the shares and an encryption of basically a product of sums. So, uh, so this is what we want. 
we want to have a very nice encryption scheme where computing the sum is, uh, okay, an encryption of the sum is the same as summing encryption, and uh, computing a product of encryption is the same as multiplying encryptions. So this might look like fully homomorphic encryption, but it's not, because we just need one multiplication on fresh data. So what we came out was the following. An encryption scheme which is somewhat homomorphic, meaning you can compute on encrypted data, but the computation is restricted to a certain set of functions. Basically, circuits of multiplicative depth one, or polynomials of degree two, if you prefer. And, uh, okay, so what we did was the following. We took a very nice encryption scheme by Brokeski by Kutanatan, which is based on uh, Ringel WE, and we tweaked it a bit. So we wanted to have uh, precisely the property I just said, so computation on encrypted data, meaning just circuits of multiplicative depth one, and we also needed a distributed decryption, and uh, since we were playing with it, we decided also to make it SIMD friendly, meaning that it handles more uh, plain text per ciphertext. And uh, yeah. So how does this perform? Well, this performs uh, very well too. We have one minor problem because we lose a bit of generality in the encryption. So in the Bedoza, they allow semi-homomorphic encryption, which is a different concept that's than somewhat homomorphic encryption. It's uh, more broader than our. On the other hand, we get rid of their most expensive zero-knowledge protocol. It's really zero, the cost, because it's not existent in our case. And the offline, offline benchmark is pretty cool. We have uh, a speed off of, what, uh, three orders of magnitude, something like that? <laughs> yeah. So to summarize, our speeds protocol, is an MPC protocol secure, secure against active adversaries corrupting a dishonest majority, and we decided to uh, build it in this preprocessing model. Our online phase is uh, linear in the amount of data needed. It's essentially needed linear also in the communication complexity, and these two properties are essentially optimal for these kind of protocols in the preprocessing model. And our preprocessing is also very nice, meaning that we make a rational use of uh, somewhat homomorphic encryption. We need fewer zero-knowledge protocols if we compare to the Bedoza. And uh, as you saw, it's very practical. Let me just go back. So this value is, I think, very nice compared to this. So, okay, if you have if you're curious, you just go in to this uh, website and you can read the ePrint version of it. And uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you.